Hello, hello, my friends. Today is a very good day. And those of you who are familiar with this channel, you know exactly why. It always revolves around what is right behind me. And today we are gonna talk about five things that you need to know about the Citroen Ducheveau. Do you actually need to know them? Probably not. But it's important to pay homage to the little car that got France on wheels. So let's do it. classic cars and automotive history like I am, go ahead and press the like and subscribe button. If you're not familiar with this channel, well, who am I? It's a good question. What I like to do is create automotive history videos. I grew up in our family business, which is a mechanic shop that specializes in imports. Had an endless restoration of a 912E. Bought myself a 1965 Mustang Fastback for Valentine's Day. Frankly, I'm just blessed to be an automotive enthusiast. So if that's your cup of tea, go ahead and press the subscribe button. So that's who I am. Welcome to the channel. So today we are only going to do five very important facts about the Citroen Ducheveau. Okay. But if you wanted to know the full history, the whole shebang, go ahead. There's a link below. I cover the entire history of Citroen. All right. The Traction Avant, which is a very, very influential car. The founder, Andre Citroen, such a cool guy, such a cool guy. And of course, the full history of the Ducheveau. All right, check that out. We're only gonna do five facts today. The Citroen was produced from 1948 to 1990, and it had 8.8 .8 million variant, million, did I say million right? Million variants of the car produced. And it is credited for being the car that put France on wheels. All right, first thing you should know about the Citroen Ducheveau, all right? It was created by the same team that created the groundbreaking Citroen Traction Avant. The Traction Avant pioneered the mass production of three revolutionary features that you have in your car today. Now, what are those three revolutionary features? Let me tell you. A unitary body with no separate frame, four wheel independent suspension, and front wheel drive. I don't think any other car has that claim to fame that three of its innovative features is still used in our everyday cars. All right, number two thing you need to know. At the factory, they had to hide the first prototypes of the Ducheveau from invading Nazis. And why? Well, you don't really want to aid any kind of occupying forces, especially if they're Nazis, all right? Also, side note, the Nazis were not afraid of stealing ideas and equipment, all right? Shocking. The Volkswagen Beetle, aka the people's car, heavily, and I mean heavily, borrowed ideas from other automotive manufacturers. In particular, the Tatra out of Czechoslovakia. So Citroen hid or destroyed the Ducheveau prototypes. Only five are known to still exist. And if you're familiar with this channel, you know I digress. I can't even help myself. Now, what did those clever factory workers at Citroen do? Well, they were still having to produce cars at the factory while they were being occupied by the Nazis. And the Nazis were using them to their own advantage. Nazis were using the cars. So what the factory workers did was alter the placement of the dip stick notch. That meant all these Nazis were driving around their cars with what they believed was the proper amount of oil and blowing up the engines. All right, now number three fact you need to know. And I'm not gonna lie, I kind of touched on this just a little bit before. The Ducheveau is credited for putting France on wheels. You see, at the time, France was very rural. Many French citizens relied on the horse and cart. You add all that to the post-war recovery, and frankly, just not many people had cars. This is exactly why the Ducheveau was designed with such austerity and sparseness. Like literally, the design inspiration for this car was to be able to carry two persons and a bag of potatoes. There's a couple of variations on that that I've seen online, you know, maybe like, like a small family and a bushel of potatoes, but you get the drift. It was very basic design. So another one of its design parameters, mottos, you get what I'm saying, um, is very funny. But I'm gonna digress before I tell you it, okay? I'm gonna tell you 
<laughs> this is a digression. I get it. I get it. I get it. I'm going to tell you what the Mazda Miata's design proverb was, and then I'm going to tell you what the douche of us was. Now, the Miata's design team followed the proverb Jinba Atai, which is Japanese, and it stands for horse and rider as one, which is a very beautiful proverb, especially when you're making a roadster. But now let me tell you the douche of us. The design team's parameters or the design team's directives was to create a car that could drive a carton of eggs across a freshly plowed field without breakage. It's funny, but it's actually exactly what they needed. Like I said, this is a very rural population in France and that's what they wanted. You give the people what they need and what they want. And you have a successful car, which like I said, 1948 to 1990, 8.8 .8 million Duchevos created. And the car was a bestseller. Achieving the designer's aim of providing the French people with a motorized alternative to a horse. So I'm not gonna lie, I'm kind of proud of myself. I really haven't digressed that much. And if you're familiar with my videos, well, I usually go down a whole line of history, all right? It's not really these one, two, three, four, five facts. It's like very in depth. So way to go me. Now number four, fact you need to know about the Dushiva. The Dushiva was the first car to be designed with radial tires. Yes, with the Dushiva, Michelin introduced and commercialized the first radial tires. And at the time, Michelin was one of the main shareholders of Citroen. Radial tires are what everybody has on their car today. And that is an impressive number four little fact you should know. Well, I said once I got to number four, I would have a little beer break. See this sweet Corvair? Did a nice little video on that one. Very cool. Oh, then 928 we got. And Willis Jeepster. I love Willis. Oh, Willis Overland Jeepster. It was still when it had Overland behind it. And, well, while we're here, let me show you my baby. My 1965 Mustang Classic. Beautiful. We have a 1972 MGB right here. Uh, it's a nice little walk to get a beer. I'm not sponsored by Shiner, but it happened to be what I had in the fridge at home. Cheers. Oh, it's so tasty. Mm. So good on the lips. Bink. Shiner is a Texas beer. If you're watching this and you're not from or in Texas like I am. All right. Well, let's go ahead and talk now about fact number five of the Citroën Ducheveau. What a good life I live. Talking about cars, something I'm passionate about, drinking some beers. Mm, mm, mm. All right, now fact number five you should know about the Citroën Ducheveau. It was more expensive to purchase a second-hand Ducheveau than one brand new. You might be thinking, why on earth is that? that's a good question. Well, because within months of its introduction, it had a three-year wait list. However, if you bought it secondhand for more money, you got it quicker. Because it had such a long wait list, Citroen gave priority for folks who had to use a car for their work. So for instance, doctors, country vets, midwives got priority on the wait list for their cars. So I don't know if I'm going to like the format of this video because I never do it with like a bulleted list of facts. We'll see. Let me know how you like it. Do we like this format or do we prefer my normal format of a very long timeline of history? I'm not sure which I like, but maybe. So I don't know. We'll see. What of those five facts did you think were more interesting? Which of those five facts was a surprise to you? Did you know about the Traction Avant? Did you know how groundbreaking the Traction Avant was? Should I do an entire video on just Andre Citroen? Like that guy was super duper. All right guys, well I think my time here is done. I'm gonna go watch the pre-recorded Saudi F1 race with family. Pretty excited about it because this year's season of F1 is not looking like the last few seasons, all right? Mercedes is not dominating. Looks like Ferrari and Red Bull have the fastest, well, have the fastest cars. So, oh my goodness, enough of my jibber jabber. Let's, let's go ahead and take a little look around this precious Citroen Ducheveau camionette.
So, like I said, not even joking. The most sparse and, I mean, fabulously sparse, too. You know what I mean? Like, this was their goal, was to make a very cheap car that could transport its citizens, motorize their citizens. So look at this. This is essentially, like, it's a little trampoline. Look at that. You could not get any more sparse on the design of the seats. And though, I will say this, they're actually quite fun. Feels like you're on a little trampoline when you're driving it. It's pretty great. Nice little, definitely something that you could, definitely something you could drive across a freshly plowed field without breaking your carton of eggs. <laughs> and you like classic car content like I do, go ahead and press the subscribe and like button. If not, that's cool too. See you next time. Cheers.